Thanks to the ever-increasing difficulty of crypto mining, graphics cards are periodically left by the wayside. While it might seem like crypto miners snap up every new card that leaves the production line, it turns out some of them actually have standards. This means that savvy gamers can pick up 4GB variants of the ever-popular RX 480 for a relatively decent price, simply because miners don't want them anymore. The trouble is, well, in 2021, do we? I've already looked at the RX 480 8GB this year, and while its performance shouldn't be that different from the 4GB model, I wanted to take this opportunity to check out what compromises the smaller frame buffer might force me to make. The model I tested was a Gigabyte G1 gaming model, but the B-roll is of a Sapphire Nitro, which would prove to be faulty and I ran out of time to reshoot. Core clock speeds are only a few points lower than the 8GB Nitro model I tested previously, but the 4GB of Hynix memory in the G1 Gaming runs at 250MHz lower than that of the 8GB Nitro card. As usual, I'm testing on a reasonably priced gaming PC that represents the average gaming rig according to the Steam survey. In certain games, a higher performance CPU may give you better results than you're seeing here. A resolution of 1080 and high settings weren't enough to expose a big difference between the 4GB and 8GB models in Forza Horizon 4. This game runs at 98fps average, only 3 frames slower than the 8GB model. The higher VRAM card might give you room to turn textures up higher, but the landscape moves by fast enough that you'll likely never see the difference. I made Cyberpunk 2077 work a bit harder this time round. 1080 low settings was my baseline, and the 47 FPS average came in a touch higher than that of the 8GB card. This is perhaps because this card occasionally struggles to load higher LOD meshes. Turning quality up to medium was still well within this card's limitations, turning in a score of 37 FPS and giving a much more next gen graphical presentation in return. Doom Eternal at 1080 medium performs about equally with the 8GB version of the RX 480, pulling in averages of 116 and lows of 84. 1080 medium is skirting quite close to the VRAM limit, using about 3.6 gigs, so unlike the 8GB model, you probably won't want to go any higher than this. On the subject of VRAM, I did some mild experimenting with the texture settings in Resident Evil Village. Strictly speaking, to keep within the game's VRAM guidelines, I had to run at the balanced preset with texture quality reduced to 0.25 gigabytes. This meant for an 88 FPS average, 68 FPS lows, and some ugly ass textures from time to time. I did a run with textures set to 1 gigabyte, causing VRAM usage to jump by an appropriate amount, and inevitably system RAM usage to jump too. This tweak, in my case, saw average FPS drop to 77 and lows to 60. This may not work out as well for you if you have less available system RAM. Warzone has earned itself a reputation for a game that used to run really well, but has been hampered by updates. The RX 480 hasn't been too hard hit. My tests of the 8GB version in February at 1080 low saw averages just exceeding 100 FPS and lows of 77. The 4GB card at the same settings using the same amount of VRAM now scores just under 95 and drops only as low as about 60. Not the end of the world, sure, but also not the kind of frame rate that might convince you to start raising quality settings. Enlisted isn't finished yet, so why release it, you might ask? Well, why indeed? Apparently this is just how games are made now, but I digress. The point being, the 4GB RX 480 can run this game in 1080 medium quality at close to 100fps average and 55fps 1% low. When the game finally does release, performance may well change.
The RX 480 absolutely smashes Apex Legends, even with textures and quality set to high. I saw averages a little over 90 FPS and 1% lows over 70. In fact, as you can see, the CPU isn't being troubled much here, so there might still be room to drop settings and gain even higher FPS if you're just plain greedy. On the subject of high FPS, Fortnite at competitive settings hits just over 190 FPS. This is 30 FPS lower than my benchmarks on the 8GB model back in February, though that could just be standard live service performance drift. That wouldn't be a major drag, as hell, it's still higher than most monitors can display, but that performance drift carries over to high quality settings as well. The February results were close to 90 FPS, this has now dropped to below 75. Assassin's Creed Valhalla took a bigger hit to performance than expected. 1080 medium scores an average of 53 FPS on the 4GB card, whereas the 8GB card was 10% faster at 58. I'm still below the VRAM limit, both in the settings and in the afterburner overlay, so I guess the clock speed difference is uh, all that could account for the difference in performance. If you're comfortable overclocking, then it might be possible to get the 4GB card to at least match the 8GB here. Watch Dogs Legion manages to almost hit an average of 60 FPS in the built-in benchmark at 1080 medium. In my experience, the benchmark represents a bit of a worst case scenario, but tweaking resolution scaling can help guarantee that 60 FPS if you're looking to use VSync or just like higher FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn is a game I've come to wish I'd used the built-in benchmark for. My current run is a bit more repeatable than my previous one, and records an average of 52 FPS at 1080 original. This is 10 FPS lower than the 8GB version, though as I say, this isn't necessarily down to a performance differential in the card, and might simply be down to a difference in weather, or time of day, or number of characters on screen, or other variables. Still, dropping resolution to 900 should bring frames up to a constant 60. I'm sorry, if I were better at this YouTube thing and had a bigger budget, I'd have done proper side-by-side -side tests of the 4GB and 8GB cards to see if it's possible for older cards like these to benefit from the higher frame buffer without otherwise sacrificing performance. 2021 games are much more VRAM hungry than back when these cards launched, and while most games seem to perform pretty similarly between cards, there is the occasional outlier. With games like Watch Dogs Legion, Warzone and Resident Evil Village requiring some serious compromises to fit into 4 gigs of VRAM, the viability of this card in years to come may be hampered somewhat. For today, as a card that can hold you through until your next new GPU purchase, the 4GB RX 480 represents surprisingly good value, considering it's jumped about 300% in price in just two years. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.